Biak and Dental type it on here. And uh, this little screw in the back comes out. And uh, if you notice on the, the pole, this is a Kilgore pole. I love this pole because it's really simple. It just uses a one, one uh, dial here to, uh, to uh, tighten and loosen. Okay, maybe you can come in a little closer. Okay. Yeah, see, see this dial right here tightens it and it loosens it. And you have to be aware of where this is, uh, this little notch, so that you can manipulate the type it on in different positions. Okay? So the flat end is where you tighten the, the type it on screw so that it won't rotate. And we'll cinch that down and then you can turn this to the right this way and now it's all locked in place so now you have your your mannequin set up here okay there cool now um let me show you the chair positions so you're gonna want to back up a little bit mm -hmm. and when i'm sitting right behind the patient like this this is the 12 o'clock position and this position is is good for either left-handed or right-handed operators the only time it's a problem is when you have a rear delivery system. If you have a rear delivery system back here, you really can't use a uh, 12 o'clock position. You have to stay with the, the 11 o'clock. When, when I discuss the chair positions, we'll be, we'll be talking mostly about right-handed operators. But if it's a left-handed operator, you just have to take the other side of the clock. So 11 o'clock would be the same as 1 o'clock, 9 o'clock would be the same as 3 o'clock, 7 would be the same as 5, okay? And so most procedures in dentistry can be performed from the 11 or 12 o'clock position, but not always the best way to approach certain procedures. Generally speaking, everything on the maxilla should be done at the 11 or 12 o'clock position if it's a crown or a filling, something like that. An occlusal, distal, it could be a, a, a full crown, anything is gonna be done generally at 11 or 12 o'clock, okay? You want to have your feet, feet firmly planted on the deck with your thighs parallel to the floor. So, you know, you don't want to have your chair up so high that you're tipping, you're tipping down like this. This is not good. You're leaning forward. It's not very ergonomically healthy for you. So get down low enough. And then uh, this position, we're going to be, we, we call this position where they're, where they're fully back like this. Um, the supine position, okay? If the patient was facing straight down like that, that would be the prone position. We don't work on patients in the prone position, okay? We may find people lying face down that need help, like uh, CPR or you know, EMTs or something, but no, that's not the way we do dentistry. The other position we don't generally use is six o'clock, that would, be, that would require you have to straddle the patient to work on their teeth. So let's remember that everything is kind of on this side of the clock, okay? Now, when you're working from this supine 12 or 11 o'clock position, you can stare straight at the teeth and do so whatever work you want. So it's perfectly acceptable to not have to use a mirror in cases where a mirror makes no sense. You may want to use the mirror to retract, but you're not going to use the mirror to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. For example, if I was doing the facial reduction on tooth number eight, I would not need a mirror. All right, so I'm going to be able to work right here from this position straight away. I'll be able to do facial reduction, interproximal reduction, no problem. When I get to the lingual, that's when I'm going to need to use my mirror. So when I'm doing lingual work, that's when the mirror comes into play and the mirror will be positioned so that I can see the teeth. And you can see that I can see the teeth here in the mirror, but once the handpiece goes in, it's a little more difficult to see. But I still can see, I have to look off to the side. You see what I mean? I can see right here in the mirror exactly what I'm doing. And you're going, well, wait a second, doc. There's a lot of stuff in the way. It looks complicated. Well, it is, but you just have to focus on what you can see 
and, and let your mind ignore all those other things. Focus on one thing. When an endodontist is looking through a microscope, you know what's going on around you. It's not like you can only see what's through the microscope. You can see people walking by. You can tell if there's someone that walks in the room, right? It's not like you're completely in your own little virtual reality world. You can see people. And I work with a microscope and I know that. I can be in the microscope and I can see if my dental assistant is turned his back to me and he's grabbing something or if he's coming over to help. I can tell very easily because you can pick that up out of your peripheral. But that's really not the way you want to work in a microscope. You really want to tune out everything and get into your zone of what it is that you're doing. So probably the most frustrating thing for most people is that they want to see the tooth like this. They're like, this is how I want to see the tooth. But you can't, it's impossible. If you turn the mirror sideways, you're gonna get a very distorted idea of what mesial is and what distal is, what buccal is and what lingual is. You wanna line things up in the same line of sight. So generally speaking, that if, my, if I turn my mirror this way, I turn my head this way. It's that so you line up the mirror, the handpiece, and the tooth all in a straight line. Don't work like this. Don't attack the tooth with two different perspectives. Otherwise, you're really gonna lose track of what you're doing. See, when I'm all lined up, left is left and right is right. But when I'm coming at an angle, left is not really left and right is not really right. They're sort of angles. And you can really mess up your preparation. You really lose track of where you are. Okay, so that's one helpful hint when it comes to using the handpiece in the mirror. Line them up. Now let's talk about what things you can do from 12 o'clock and 11 o'clock. You can have the patient turn to the left about 45 degrees and turn to the right 45 degrees. You don't ever let them go below perpendicular to the floor, okay? Occlusal plane perpendicular to floor is as low as you go. You don't get to do this. Okay? And now I can lean over just a little bit and I can see how I'm reducing the facial of this tooth. I can also perform a class five preparation very easily. You know what I'm saying? I can even, just leaning just a little bit, can see my burr passing through the interproximal. Let's have the patient tip over all the way as far as they can. Not like that, but right about there. But I can, I can do direct vision right now and go straight in to the situation. This is the best chair position that we have for the mandibular teeth when we're working on molars to get, and whether it's a, an inlay, an amalgam, a composite, or a full crown of any kind, because you can see the line of draw. You can see the curve of Wilson. And when you can see the curve of Wilson tipping towards the lingual, we can get the line of draw of your preparation established very nicely. Maybe you can't refine the margins. Maybe you can't see everything, but you can get the line of draw started. Once you get the line of draw started, you can then shift around to a 12 o'clock supine, and then you can continue on perhaps the lingual, or you get your mirror in here and work on the mesial, work on the distal, distal lingual, which is always a hard area, and you can get, get access to those areas. It's really cool how that can work really well for you. One of my mentors, Dr. Warren Johnson, taught me Whenever you're trying to line up the mandibular molars with a proper line of draw, start at seven. Start your prep at seven, but you can finish at 11 or 12. So seven o'clock position, super important. Working on the left side or working on the right side, there's a little challenge. There are different nuances, and I want you to get used to doing things like this. Turning the patient away, turning the patient towards you. Trying a direct vision, trying it with the mirror, moving them away, moving them towards you, having them in the middle, direct vision and mirror. Changing to nine o'clock position, which would be here, right? Away and towards you with the mirror and without. Supine, away from you, towards you, middle, with the mirror, without the mirror. Do you understand that you have all these possibilities? And sometimes you, the reason why you're having a hard time is you haven't explored all the possibilities. I cannot tell you exactly what position that is gonna work best for you. Everyone's a little different. 
but it's helpful to at least understand you have options and that's the biggest problem that people have. Usually when I say, when someone's having difficulty getting access to something, yeah, the distal lingual, for example, on, on this maxillary first molar, or the distal lingual maxillary first molar on the other side, I'm naturally moving my mirror into different positions to get access to it. And sometimes if I can't see, I'll move the patient away from me and go, whoa, this actually would be easy if I just use direct vision. So, so consider your options of chair position, whether you are at 7, 9, or 12, the chair angle, whether you're reclined or supine, the head position, whether the patient is facing forward, to the left, or to the right, and then finally, whether direct vision or indirect vision with the mirror makes the most sense. Right? You can change the reclined or supine. You can change whether you use mirror or not use a mirror, and direct or, or, or mirror shot. And then you can also change whether the patient's away from you or towards you. Uh, you could also go 12, 9, or 7 o'clock. So you've got all these options, and the key is for you to explore them and see what really works for you. And also understand some things. Dentistry is not easy. And certain parts of dentistry are very difficult, and other parts of dentistry are actually pretty easy. For example, when you're working on uh, the distal lingual of any tooth, it's very difficult. It gets a little easier over time, but it's a difficult part of the procedure. But doing the occlusal is really easy. So some parts are going to be really fast and really easy, and some parts are going to be really kind of hard. It's like climbing a mountain. There are some flat, easy parts, and then there are some steep parts. You don't climb the mountain and go, gosh, what do I do about this steep part? I can't believe it's so steep. I don't know if I'm going to climb the mountain. No, you go into it knowing that there are these things. So a lot of this frustration that people feel when they're working with the mirror and with the mannequin is that they're shocked at how difficult some parts are. Because when you're on the bench, it's all easy. It's a great equalizer. There's no difference whether it's the mesolingual, distolingual. You don't care. Because you can move it any way you like. You can get it to your best advantage. It's not an issue. But when you work on the mannequin, you're restricted. And some parts become quite difficult. Okay? I'm utilizing right here a modified pen grasp. Okay? This is the modified pen grasp right here. And I don't want you grabbing the handpiece like this. Okay? This is like if you're grabbing hold of a crayon or something. This is not not good hand control. You wanna have your hand, so you're braced here. In fact, sometimes when I'm doing demos, I'll hold it way out here so my fingers are not getting in the way of the video. And it's actually very relaxing, it's very easy. So chair position is here. Modified pen grasp with the thumb pushing up against the uh, middle finger in the index finger. And then that leaves this fourth digit and fifth to help stabilize your position. So. I'm even using chair uh, finger rests with my mirror. So the mirror's got finger rests, the handpiece has finger rests. Everything's stabilized. You see how my elbows are tucked in? I don't have my arms out like this. I'm not like this. I'm sitting upright, my elbows are tucked in tight, and I've got a nice little circle from left to right that's very controlled, okay? And so now I can make minor movements in the mirror with just slightly moving my finger about my finger rest. I want you to see something. I don't go like this with the burr. When you watch uh, us prepare teeth, you don't see me doing this. Back up so you can show the wrist movement, okay? There you go. You see how we're going around in circles like this? That's not the way to do it. Don't do it that way. Do it this way. See, it's a bigger movement. It's a movement that actually comes from your shoulder down to your wrist, and it's not a wrist movement. When I'm doing dentistry, my wrist never moves. When you're doing hygiene, your wrist moves a lot, and hygienists have a lot of problems with their wrists. Dentists don't have those problems because we're using our whole arm in the process. Our feet are providing us stability. Our elbows are locked in, more stability. We're using the arm as we're moving in a fine motor movement, we don't use our fingers unless we're doing just small little, little maybe a little bit of instrumentation 
uh, can be done with the finger. Just a little bit of a rock here and there like this. I don't know if you can see it. She's pretty far back, but you can see that I'm doing a little bit here, but I rarely do this. Normally the motions are done from up on the shoulder. If you want to get the line of draw proper on a preparation, and I'll demonstrate it on a central, for example, line your handpiece up with the long axis of the tooth, put your finger rest, and then start the preparation. Once you get that one side completed, and you're now ready to start the other side, maybe you took a break, you stood up, you stretched, whatever, and now you're ready to continue with the other side, I want you to line the burr back up with the long axis, set your finger rest, and then go to the other side. And you'll find that you will not create an undercut because your finger rest is going to lock in the line of draw. If, for example, you work on one side of the tooth, okay, and then you move your finger rest, and then you start working on the other side without resetting your line of draw, you have no control. You must have a reset and lock. Reset and lock. See the fingers locking down? That is the key. Okay, when we lock ourselves in like this, okay, this move, this move, this move, and this move, rotating and tipping is impossible. It's uncomfortable, it goes against our muscles, our physiology, it doesn't work properly. It won't work. That's why the finger rest is so powerful. The finger rest locks in our line of draw and maintains that throughout the preparation. But whenever you stop using your finger rest, it's all over. And I've watched dentists curl their fingers up like this. They curl their fingers back and they're using their fingers like this and they're trying to move their teeth around this way and they're wondering why they're getting undercuts. They're not doing anything to prevent undercuts from happening. So lay your hands gently on the teeth, not all over the cheeks, not on the chin. Don't squish up against their forehead or anything, but try to lay on the, on the teeth themselves and lock in your finger rest after you've lined up your line of draw lock it in and start your preparation. One of the things that happens a lot with right-handed operators is all the anterior teeth start being prepped with a leaning off towards the left. And if you're a left-handed operator, all the pre teeth get prepped leaning towards the right. And the reason for that is that, is that as we're operating, we're holding the handpiece up like this, okay? We're holding the handpiece upward. We haven't locked into our line of draw. So you have to look at the patient straight on and really focus on where's the line of draw of this particular tooth. I believe it's right here, lock. Once you're locked in, if you wanna move a little bit, you're fine because your wrist is not gonna move. Your wrist is gonna maintain that line of draw. Sometimes the mirror will be floating above the handpiece. You see it's kind of floating above the handpiece right now and, and I'm using it here. Other times, the, the mirror will be behind the handpiece, okay? Behind the handpiece. So sometimes the mirror is in front or floating above, and sometimes the mirror should be behind. And those are two other things you might try. Sometimes people, when people are working on the distal lingual and they're, they're trying to put the, the, hand, the, the mirror above, they can't see, I say, well, no, you won't be able to see because you need to put the mirror off to the side or in front, okay? And Another thing that's really helpful when you're doing difficult areas is do a couple trial passes. So hit the handpiece, but don't touch the tooth. Practice the stroke before you lay into it. Does that make sense? And you really know which direction you're gonna go that way.